In the last video, I talked about how you need a meta stable state in order to to get a population inversion. So basically, what this means is that um, a meta stable state is a state where an electron in a higher orbital and and with actually room in the lower orbit for it to fall into. Right, so instead of falling into the lower orbit, the electron might stay in the in the higher orbit for uh, a short time before it falls. So that's a metastable state. And we need enough of these um, excited metastable states. Uh, we need more of, of these excited states than there are electrons in the lower states. Uh, and that situation is called a population inversion. I think that we have more excited states and less of the, the lower so-called ground states. Okay. So in order to achieve this, we, um, we, need, we need materials, we need materials where it is possible for, for these excited states to stay excited, to stay in the higher state for long enough. Now, that is a rather, um, that tends to be uh, something unusual, even in the atomic scale. It's a bit like saying that, you know, you lift up a stone, and the stones, uh, and you drop it, and the stone sort of hangs in the air for a few seconds before it drops. Okay, so it's, it's, it's unusual, it's a bit strange. It is. It can be very strange if it happens in everyday life. Now, but in the atomic scale, we are not talking about a few seconds. Of course, um, when we say uh, the excited state has to stay up for long enough, well, what? How long is long enough? Now, in the atomic scale, long enough means that it, it should stay up for maybe um, a lot longer compared to the time it takes for for the photon to go through to go through the the material in the laser. Right, the, the material in the laser that where, where this uh, stimulated emission happens. So, and how long does it take? Well, um, you know the speed of light is three, three times ten to the power of um, eight meters per second. That's the kind of speed that we are talking about, right? And and how how long is laser? Well, your laser pointer is really small. Maybe you can hold it, hold it in your hand. It's and it's just a few centimeters wide. There are bigger lasers that are maybe um, maybe ten or probably less than a meter. So we're talking about maybe ten ten centimeters. So how long does light take to travel a distance of ten centimeters? Right, if you take maybe point one divided by this you will get something less than a nanosecond. So we are talking about time scale of, of less than a nanosecond for the you know for the photon to travel um, through the through if you like it's called the lasing material right through, through the material in the laser where where we try to create this population inversion and stimulated emission. So we are talking about about um, this kind of time scale, the metastable state, the, the excited electrons in atoms have to stay up, stay in the higher state for much longer than one nanosecond. And you don't, in the everyday uh, time scale, a very short time in human terms can be a lot longer than one nanosecond. It might be a few microseconds, for example, metastable state it can be microseconds, milliseconds. That would be very long. All right. So we are we need we're looking for this kind of states. And if it is possible to find materials where where electrons can stay in the higher orbits in the excited states for that kind of time scale before it falls down. Then, then 
would be possible to achieve a population inversion. I mean, it, it, we know how to excite electrons. From the earlier videos, I've talked about things like um, shining lights on, on the material, uh, like the hydrogen emission, or, or just heating it, or shining a, shooting a beam of electrons through it. So there are many ways to excite the electrons. So the trick is to make it stay up. So what kind of material? Are there such, such material where where the electrons tend to stay up for for long enough before before it falls into the lower state? Well, actually, I think most of us um, um, might have already seen such a material. Let's have a look. Now, um, I guess nowadays um, the the clock, you know, with the minutes and second and uh, hour hands are, are not so common anymore. Let me try and draw this. Imagine, uh, imagine the the traditional clock, you know, with the minute hand and the hour hand. Okay, and um, so you know how how to read the time, right? That is uh, if a clock you know, with the, the usual circular face of the clock, and then you have the time that's twelve, that's uh, Three, that's six, that's nine. So if you see this on your clock, that's um, what time is that? Two o'clock. So that's how we read the clock. And of course, if the clock is in your room, we would have our um, the light in the room. I mean, you can't see this clock in the dark, right? So you need a lamp, maybe a fluorescent light. Switch on the lamp and you see the clock, and that's how we read the time. What happens when you need to switch off the clock when, when you go to go to bed? Well, when you go to bed, you switch off the lights. Now, if I switch off the light, I can't see the clock, right? But if I wake up at night, or if I wake up in the early morning and, and when it's still dark, and I need to check the time uh, and see how 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 many more minutes I can I can sleep before I have to get up and go to school or go to work. Um, it would be troublesome to get up and, and hit the light switch on the wall. So it would be nice if we can see this clock in the dark. Now, if I switch off the light, it would be really nice. I can still see the minute and the hour hands glowing in the dark and indeed we can and you might actually have seen such clocks before you might even have seen toys that can glow in the dark now this clocks that can glow in the dark are made of materials are made of materials that absorb light when the light is on when, when the lamp or the light is lighting is on and when you switch off the light in the room it will continue to glow because the absorbed light energy, the absorbed light energy has excited the electrons in the atoms in the material to, an, to a meta stable state. And this material is, is, a, is very special types of materials in which the meta stable state can stay excited for not just micro or milliseconds. We're talking about minutes and maybe hours. If you switch off your light, you'll find that after, if you wake up you know, from your sleep after an hour or two, you, you might still be able to see the hands of your clock glowing. Right. Now this is a phenomenon, um, now this is a, a phenomenon, phenomenon called fluorescence.
of chromosomes and now there is also a, 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 a term Phosphorescence. Okay, I'm spelling this right. Um, making a guess here. Yeah? Let me try this. Phosphorescence. No, I kind of think that there is an S there. Right. So this this words represents uh, uh, materials in which. Um, the atoms can stay in excited states for either a shorter or longer period of time. So I'm not going to worry about these terms for, for this video. Uh, you, can, you can look up the details um, in Wikipedia, Wikipedia. So what I just like to say is that for the clock, for the clock, we are talking about um, about a situation like this. Let me, let me illustrate this with uh, an energy level diagram. Okay. So let me draw a few lines to represent the energy levels. In the beginning, in the beginning, um, the electrons in the atoms in here would be at the lower level, at a lower level. Now, atoms typically uh, Apart from hydrogen atoms, which uh, which I've talked about, other atoms, other atoms or other elements would normally have uh, many electrons occupying many different energy levels. So what I'm drawing here is just very schematic. Okay, uh, let's just imagine that maybe one of the electron in, in each atom get excited when when the light is on. So when there's when there's light. The light, photons of the light, goes to the atoms in the, in the material, in this fluorescent material, fluorescent material, and the electrons. One of the electrons in one, one, one of the, um, one of the electrons in one of the energy levels in in, in an atom would be excited. So from from one of the energy levels, it will be excited to a higher level. So, uh, right, so at first it's there, then it might get excited to that. So I might call this the ground, the ground state of the electron. Remember that it's not just one electron in the atom, there are lots of electrons and there are many, many levels, or many, many levels. So I'm just looking at one of each, one electron and one energy level and that electron will get excited when photons from the lamp falls on the clock or falls on the material on, on the minute and hour hands on the clock. So that electron gets excited to a higher level. And we call that the excited excited state. The excited state. Now normally for most atoms of most materials, after going to excited state, uh, the electron would fall back down quite quickly. Now I've already mentioned the time possible, the time scales, some time scales just now. Uh, we're talking about extremely short time scales, maybe much less than a nanosecond for for most atoms. Right? It might just fall back down. Now, but in the case of fluorescent material, what happens is that maybe some many of the electrons will still fall back down quite quickly after absorb, absorbing um, photons from the from the light. But there are also many other states around, as I've said. So there are lots lots of different states at different levels. I mean, atoms have lots of electrons, and it's very complicated. Now, for fluorescent material, what happens is that there is usually some states in between this uh, ground state and excited state. Uh, there might be a number of states in between, and it is when the electron is in the excited state, apart from falling back to the original 
ground states, it is also possible for the electron to fall into other states in between, somehow. Okay, so um, I don't actually know how, uh, so, but we don't need the details here. But we can, uh, I think we can accept that there can be many states around and there could be some in between. So there's a chance for the electron in the excited state to fall into a different states. Now, for some of those states, for electrons in some of those other states, the, the nature of those states could be quite different from the ground state um, in a way which, um, again, it's difficult to explain in a, in a short time uh, and we, we don't need it for our understanding of how the laser works. So I would just say that it, will, it can fall into some other states from which is very difficult or from which it might take longer for the electron to, to fall back down to the ground states. So because it's, that there are these states, there are these states where it's difficult for the electron to come quickly to the ground state, the electron might stay there for longer than in the maybe the original excited states. So these states are called metastable states. So metastable in the sense that it is is metastable is like saying kind of stable but not, not very or completely stable. So it's kind of stable in the sense that the electron can stay up longer than usual. You know, usual as in much less than a nanosecond. But it's um it will still fall back down after uh, after a time. Okay. So in the case of the materials that are used to make our glowing hands of, of a clock, or maybe some toys that you have seen before that glows in the dark, we are talking about times, time scales, right, where the electrons can stay up here in the metastable states for you know maybe hours, as long as hours before it falls back down. And when it falls back down, it can emit a photon. In the case of the hands that they in clocks that close at night, we're talking about probably green photon. Right? I've seen uh, uh, green colors paint on 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 clock dials glowing in the dark. I I don't think I've seen many other different colors, but I'm sure there must be. Now this picture, remember this picture, is is uh it would be useful um for what comes next when I when I want to explain how a laser works. <laughs>